Thanks for doing this, Tony. Could you tell me a little bit about the uh, the game plan? Did you know coming into the game it was going to be a pass heavy kind of attack, or did that just kind of develop? Uh, it personally developed. You know, uh, we always go into the game thinking run first, but you know, as our jobs, you know, our coaches tell us never to think that. You know, uh, if your numbers call, you got to make your plays, and the passes just started connecting more, and we driving the ball down the field, so. I I could say the passes was the game plan like towards the like end of the game, but it was never the game plan going into the game. It was like we really didn't have a pass game plan going into the game. We just went about how the game was going. And just one other one for me. So much went wrong in that second quarter. How tough was it for you guys to collect yourselves at halftime after everything that had gone wrong there? It was pretty tough. You know, we got everybody together, you know, um, and told them we've been here before, you know, uh, we was on the other side, you know, so we just went out into the second half, you know, motivated and making every play count. That was our motto, making every play count. So, Thank you. Again, if you have a question for Antonio, please use the raise hand feature. Uh, next, we'll go to Greg Vorce. Greg, your microphone is open. Hey, Antonio. What was it like for you guys as, as this game, unfortunately, started to get behind you? You trailed by 17 points. You hadn't been there before. Mentally, how were you feeling in, in that spot where your backs were against the wall? Because you guys responded. It was just you kind of ran out of time. Mm -hmm. Um. It was hard, you know, personally, you know, how everything went this season, you know, it was hard for majority of the guys, you know, we had guys, you know, keeping their hair down, but we also had guys telling them to keep, you, keep staring your feet, you know. Um, personally, you know, most of the guys been here before, uh, the older guys been here before, so we know how everything goes and what could happen. So we, we told the younger guys to motivate the sideline, you know, keep everything up. And then time just ran out, we didn't have enough time. To, execute our plays. And as a senior, how do you now get your guys refocused? And how quickly do you try to get your guys refocused knowing there's still another game and there's a trophy you can still add to the case? You know, um, like Coach Lipo said, you know, let's, uh, let's, let's win another bowl game. You know, let's put this one behind us. We still got another football game to play. You know, we can't live off this game to determine our next game. So that's what like, Coach Lipo Lipo is telling us in the locker room. So everybody's uplifting, everybody's down right now, but we'll get back on our feet. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Again, if you have a question for Antonio, please use the raise hand feature. Next, we'll go to Steve Helwick. Steve, your microphone is open. Hi, Antonio. Buffalo. Uh, dominated most of their opponents this season and come up shorthanded. What's the feeling right now? And is it similar to what you guys felt leaving the same field two years ago against Northern Illinois? Most definitely. Um, it's hard for most of us, uh, especially the ones who was there in 2018. You know, um, it's tough on us. And, you know, seeing the younger guys, the same, having the same emotions we had when we was there, it hurts, but you just got to put it behind. We just got to put it behind us and just keep going. Okay. Uh, next, we'll go to Rachel Lindsay. Rachel, your microphone is open. Antonio, at the end of the second quarter, those two touchdowns that Ball State scored, how much momentum did they take away from your team or did they deflate your team at the end of the second half? I mean, the end of the second quarter. I wouldn't say they deflated us. It was a uh, more of a reality check, um, you know, cause we never, this season, we never been there before. So um, like our coaches told us and the locker room at like we've been there. Um, we didn't, we didn't expect that to happen. Um, it was just, it was just hard, you know, um, I wouldn't just, I wouldn't say they deflated us, mm -hmm. but I know um, we had to regather ourselves coming into the second half. 
uh, having the momentum. So. Thank you. You're welcome. Next, we'll go to Mary Margaret Johnson. Mary, uh, your microphone is open. Hey, Antonio, kind of just piggybacking off of Rachel's question there. Um, that reality check that you guys feel like you got, you know, from having never trailed anybody this season to, you know, having quickly that lead just kind of go away. Do you feel like that kind of an experience will help you guys as you hopefully prepare for your next, uh, for the bowl game? Uh, most definitely, you know, um, we're going to go over it um, for our next practice, you know, having everybody prepare for that situation. So they wouldn't be, so heads wouldn't be down basically, uh, you know, always keeping the energy up because at the end of the day, you never know what could happen, you know, uh, um, it could be a comeback win and um, story, story, end of story, but uh, we're going to go into next week, but more prepare for it. Awesome. Thanks. All right, uh, that's that's it for Antonio. Thanks, Antonio. You're welcome. Next, we'll bring on Kyle Van Trees. Uh, if you have a question for Kyle, please uh, raise your hand at this time. We'll go to Mary Margaret Johnson. Your microphone is open. Hey, Kyle, I know it's still, you know, really pretty fresh, this, uh, this loss right now. But um, as you've said so many times last year, throughout the years, you guys always learn something from losses. What do you feel like is something that you, um, you guys can learn from this loss? Uh, there's a lot that we can learn. Um, you know, first and foremost, it's the come from behind, you know, effort that we need to have, uh, the feeling of needing to you know, let's take it up a notch. Um, and then on top of that, it's also just learning to lean on each other um, in these hard, in these hard situations. Um, those are, you know, lessons in life that are going to, you're going to take with you on the field and off the field. Um, and they're valuable lessons. Um, and sometimes you got to learn them the hard way, but uh, there's something that we're going to have to take with us as we go on. Thanks so much. Next, we will go to Greg Force. Greg, your microphone is open. Kyle, what um, what was Lance's message for you guys post game? You guys just had your 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 talk there. Um, he he told us he was proud of us, and everything that we've done so far this year. Um, you know, it's gonna sting, is what he said. But uh, we got to get it back on our feet, keep our heads up. Um, you know, and just get back to work. Uh, we've got another game potentially, whatever happens with the bowl games. Um, so, you know, it's another opportunity for us to, you know, get back on our feet and, you know, prove that we're still that team that can dominate. You mentioned, you know, moving forward, obviously this is going to sting for a while. As a leader, as the quarterback, what do you do to try and guide your guys and let them know there's still a chance to put some more hardware in that trophy case? Oh, it's just, you know, keeping people's chins up, you know, every time you walk, you walk around in the locker room or in the facilities, just keep pushing their chins up, talking to them, uh, you know, staying with people, hanging out with people. Um, it's a brotherhood, it's a family, and you got to maintain that. And then also just, you know, hold people accountable to the standard that we have in place at Buffalo. And uh, that's to be, you know, a pro, that's to be relentless, committed and pride. That's our mantra. Um, so, you know, just being, uh, being who we are, and that's going to be what we got to do. Next, we'll go to Mike Harrington. Mike, your microphone is open. Kyle, what in your mind was the challenge Ball State came to you guys with to shut down your running game like no one else has this year? Um, I mean, they're a super experienced group, uh, especially those front seven guys. Um, you know, big, fast, physical, came down hard, um, saw it in film. We prepared for it. Um, they made a lot of great plays. Uh, you know, they were relentless. Um, and then, you know, as the game goes on, your game plan kind of changes and we ended up throwing the ball more. But, you know, that's not anything that we uh, aren't ready for. Um, 
but you know going into the game they we, we anticipated that we were going to be able to move the ball like we have all year long and you got to have that confidence going into any game um but today they made a lot of plays and like you said the the one play they made obviously was the scoop and score i mean how did you see that play and just how did you collect yourself at halftime because so many bad things happened the last six minutes of that second quarter yeah i mean it's a it's a game of football you know it's everything nothing's going to go the way that you plan it um you know you have a game plan you have a script but going off script is football and um you know thing bad things are going to happen it's based on and then you just got to rebound rebound from that and um that happening before halftime that was that was tough um for the offense for me personally um but, you know, we came back out and we just talked about keeping our heads up and uh, doing what we got to do, focus on us. Um, we, we came out, we still moved the ball really well. We just couldn't uh, finish in the red zone. Um, and, you know, we had the one touchdown, um, try getting some momentum back on our side. Uh, but, you know, you know, dominoes didn't fall. Next, we have a question for Blake Dollier. Blake, your microphone is open. Hey, thank you. Um, my question is kind of a new scenario for you guys, obviously, uh, you know, not being down up until this point this year, what are going to be some of the learning, um, you know, things you guys implement in practice and uh, learning techniques you're going to use going forward into the bowl game? Uh, I mean, not, nothing too much technical about it. It's much more mental, um, you know, watching film and being prepared for it mentally as a team, as all three phases of, uh, the game, you know, offense, defense, special teams. Um, you're going to watch film. You're going to learn from it, um, and we're going to have that that uh, feeling in our in our minds now, uh, going into any game, any contest. Of you know, now we've been in this situation. What did we learn from it? Um, and it's just you know, pounding that into our brains, letting our uh, mental processes build on that. Um, but like I said earlier, it's it's a valuable lesson, and uh, we got to take advantage of. Because um, there's positives in every situation, but we got to take advantage of the lessons that we can learn from it. This is the last question for Kyle. Uh, Steve Helwick, your microphone is open. Hi, Kyle. For most of the season, Buffalo grounded the game, and you'd have maybe around in the ballpark of 20 attempts per game. So what was the feeling tonight of playing from behind for the first time this season and having to air it out 42 times tonight? Um, you know, Obviously, the being behind feeling uh, is kind of, it's not what you want. It's not what you expect going in. It's not the thing that you have on your mind. Um, but as for airing it out and throwing it, I mean, as a quarterback, you are ready no matter what, whenever your number's called. And tonight it was called a lot more for me, and I was ready. But um, like I said, we just didn't make as many plays. They made a lot of plays. Um, but, you know, we're, we're a unit. So when one unit, when one side of the ball goes, you know, Having, is struggling. The other side's got to pick them up when the run game is struggling. The pass game's got to pick it up, and vice versa. Um, so you know, it's not anything that I wasn't ready for, or that I don't think the receivers or the offense was re wasn't ready for. Um, but like I said, just plays were made, and they made more than us. All right. Thanks a lot, Kyle. Appreciate it. We have head coach of the Buffalo Bulls, Lance Lightbold. Uh, coach, why don't you just start with an opening statement about tonight's game? Uh, you know, first of all, uh, I congratulate Mike New and his staff, his team for outstanding game. They played well. They outplayed us. Um, all that said, still uh, extremely proud of our team playing for 60 minutes. Um, you know, we just, you know, we, we answered some scores and did some things, but we once the block field goal happened, I don't think we really, um, the momentum shifted. The fumble return for a touchdown, obviously, was a big, big momentum swing there right before the half. Um, and you look at the second half, and they only scored three points, but we never could could capitalize on those things. We got some stops defensively. Um, got the interception, but had the penalty. That didn't give us the field position, the fourth down. Uh, you know, unfortunately, Kevin lost it in the lights and, uh, you know, just those type of things. So as I told our team, I'm proud of them, um, extremely proud for the way they played. But uh, Ball State was a better football team today. 
Thank you, Coach. If you have a question for Coach Leipold, please use the raise hand feature at this time. First question comes from Rachel Lindsay. Rachel, your microphone is open. I got it. Lance, your team faced its first significant deficit, you know, probably for the first time this season in game when that's happening. How do you kind of get your team to maintain its composure, even, even if it's if, as it's facing that? Um, you know, you keep talking about the things that we talk about competing and staying together. You know, even though I don't think it affected, affected us because at the end of the, the half, um, I'm trying to check my scores here, Rachel, so I have it all for you correctly. But, um, you know, there, there was a sense of frustration, I think, when, when, when the uh, fumble re recovery and things were there. But I thought we went in at a halftime and, and made adjustments. I thought we collected our composure. And, and again, as I look at this, you know, we battled. It wasn't, uh, you know, you're down 10, you have a chance on a fourth down inside the red zone hopefully go on and score. Now it's a three point game. Um, so that part, uh, I told them, like I said, it, I'm proud of that, how they played. Um, we just didn't, we didn't make enough plays. We gave up too many big plays in the first half. Thank you. All right, next we'll go to Chris Vanini. Chris, your microphone is open. Yeah, Lance. Uh... What, what did you make of Ball State's kind of front seven? Obviously, that was the first sack you guys had allowed all year, and you, you weren't able to quite run the ball as well as you had. Yeah, um, I thought they played extremely well, Chris. Um, probably the difference in the game. You know, I, I think they had a nice plan. Um, they weren't going to let us get the ball outside. They're going to try to box it all in and, and make it all and, and go from there. You know, that said, I thought really throughout the game, I thought we threw the ball well. Um, probably better than people gave us credit for. Um, you saw some explosive plays, but but again, uh, you know, I you know they they probably won that battle tonight, obviously, and uh, you got got to tip your hat off. I told Mike after the game, thought his team outplayed us, and they and, and they outcoached us. All right, next we'll go to Mike Harrington. Mike, your microphone is open. Lance, sort of along the lines of that answer, are you surprised that uh, you lost this game at the line of scrimmage, given the way your your lines have played the, all season? Yeah, I, I was. You know, again, credit to them. I, I thought, you know, we, we really couldn't get Jared on track. You know, I see, you know, Kevin came up with a big run. Um, but it, it's a team game, Mike, in a lot of ways. And, uh, you know, when we never really got the momentum to – to keep kind of hammering away at the running game there from the second quarter on. So um, um, I, I don't want to take away anyth anything away from them though. Okay. So I, you know, and if I say, yeah, I, I thought so um, I, until I really watch the film and, and really look at where, where it all happened. I, I don't want to comment too deeply on that, but yeah, I, I think it was a little surprising that, that uh, as well as we had played all year that, um, uh, that, that played out that way. And just one other point. You came out throwing, obviously, Kyle found Antonio quite a bit. It was a little surprising to see your your pass run balance. I mean, was that a little bit anticipating it'd be more difficult to run against them anyway? You knew that coming into the game? Yeah, we figured that, it, you know, um, obviously, as you can see, they're a good coaching staff. They're going to see if, you if you know, as many times as we've thrown the ball, um, we were, you know, you're going if, to, if we were going to beat them, we're going to do it probably through the air. We talked about it even today in our morning meetings that it was going to be more like a, our game against Miami where, where we had some of those explosive plays. We were ready for them and called them, as you could see in that first quarter. And, uh, you know, Trevor Wilson, you know, came up with some big plays early, um, you know, again with Antonio. So we, we anticipated that. And, you know, the nice thing also for us was, um, not just the success of our running game, but sometimes wind conditions and other things have always played a part of the play calling that maybe kind of holds you back if you're running the ball well. And tonight with, you know, neutral conditions, we're, we're able to, to be, uh, to be more, you know, I guess more ready to throw it in the air a little bit. And thought Kyle played well, thought our receivers played well. 
Next, we'll go to Greg Vorse. Greg, your microphone's open. Lance, just what was your message to the guys post game? Um, that I was very proud of them. Um, I was proud of them because they did the things that we've always asked them to do. Um, to play hard, play physical, play for 60 minutes. And I thought they did that. I said, uh, unfortunately, we did not play our best. We did not take advantage of some opportunities. And uh, they were the better team tonight. And uh, we have to give them credit for that. And uh, so we'll see where we have a chance to uh, go play another game and uh, hopefully win the second bowl game in school history. And, uh, and we're going to turn our attention to that once they tell us, uh, you know, where we're going. Building off of that, we've discussed all year about the leadership you have on this group. Mentally, how important is that going to be once again to put this behind them and know, as you just mentioned, there's another opportunity to add to the trophy case? Um, very important. I, I grabbed the captains and, and some other guys at halftime and while the coaches were, were meeting offensively and defensively, and I talked to them, hey, we're going to, you know, your leadership is important now. Is there anyone can lead when everything's going well? Um, you know, but it's, it's when you get tough times and, and you, and you kind of see where things are going and, you know, you can't get into finger pointing and blaming you, you got to keep, keep pounding away. And I, I thought our guys did that. I thought again, I, even at the end, we, we got a lot of guys banged up during that game and, and, and most of them returned because they, they wanted to be out there. And, uh, and, and that's part of the things I'm really proud of. Uh, last uh, question, uh, Mary Margaret Johnson. Your microphone is open. Hey, coach. Every after you know all the losses that not very many since I've been here with you, but uh, after every loss, you always say that there's something that you guys can learn from. What is uh, what's something that you guys can learn from this loss tonight? Yeah, it, that's hard to say at this moment. It's about making you know consistently making plays, doing doing the little things right. Um, uh, you know, I, that's a tough one to, to completely answer, but it's my responsibility as the head coach. Um, I obviously didn't, didn't do a good enough job to have them in, in a position to win the game. And, and it starts with me. And as soon as I get a chance to start watching it, we'll start searching for those answers. And, and again, uh, you know, it's been a while since this team has lost a football game and, uh, you know, and everything else we've been through. Yeah, we'll see. But, We've always told them win or lose, we have to own what's on the film and we have to come back coachable. And, uh, and, and with the desire and the want to, to, uh, to want to get better and, and get it corrected. And, and I'm confident they will. All right, I want to thank you coach for taking the time and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Thank you. All right, thank you, Jeremy, for all your work this year as well. Thank you. We'll be uh, getting uh, quarterback Drew Plitt, linebacker Jimmy Daw, and head coach of the Ball State Cardinals, Mike New, in a minute.